All right, the first part of our digestive system dissection is on the structures that you find in the cheek of the cat. So you should have removed the skin and you should have cut off the ear. So here would be the hole where the ear was. And then the next thing that you're going to find is the jugular vein. And I have put a green line here along here. And you're going to need to find the jugular vein. It looks as though in many of our cats the jugular vein did not get injected which is going to make its separation a little bit more challenging but we are going to, you are going to need to find this blood vessel that running up the neck of the cat and separate it from the underlying muscles so one of the things that you're going to need to do is to find this jugular vein it's a fairly wide structure here and it should run up the neck of the cat then when you get up to the cheek area here, there's some overlying tissue that you're going to need to remove. It's not very thick, but you're going to want to uh, make kind of a shallow incision along here. And you're going to remove this structure down to where you can find the blood vessel. So if you found the blood vessel, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of peel underneath here and then remove that. When you do that, you should see the branching of this blood vessel here. And so there are um, some branches that you need to know. So this one right here, this is the jugular vein here. And then this is the anterior facial vein, which goes up to the molar gland. And the molar gland is right here in the crook of the mouth. So this area right here is the molar gland. You can tell a gland because it has a structure, uh, a consistency similar to the, the peas. So it's kind of lumpy-like. So if you look right here, you'll find a structure which is called the molar gland. And your anterior facial vein should be going right up to the bottom edge of that. And that's in the, where the two lips come together in the corner of the mouth here. So this is the molar gland. Um, then you have a posterior branch of the facial vein. So this is the posterior facial vein. That's going to go to this white area right here. This white area around the um, ear is the parotid gland. And um, you're going to um, be able to identify that. Then this structure right here, it's kind of pinkish. This is the masseter muscle. Um, and so all you need to do is to be able to identify the masseter muscle right here. And then um, where the posterior facial vein comes, that's going to be your marker for finding the um, sub mandibular. salivary gland um, and that one we're going to want to lift up the posterior facial vein here you don't want to detach it but you're going to need to kind of get it out of the way and then you're going to find this kind of roundish structure here and you want to find the natural um, separation for this. So if you lift this up a little bit, you can cut that and then you'll see that there's a, a line there. And so you're going to want to go underneath that to find the submandibular gland. So without destroying this blood vessel, because that's going to be part of our dissection for the blood vessels, you do want to be able to, there's a, there's a covering around the, um, some kind of fascia connective tissue around the submandibular gland, so you can remove that. So 
So this structure right here is um, fairly easy to identify. This is the submandibular gland, and then the parotid gland is this one right here. There is a duct coming from the parotid gland. Sometimes you're lucky enough to see that duct. It should be running, I can barely see it right here. It should be running right along here. I won't make that part of our identification, but you will want to identify the, the parotid gland and the masseter muscle. And then, um, right down here in this area here where this white structure is here, this is the sublingual gland. So your um, <coughs> posterior facial vein runs right across the sublingual gland, so that's this lower white part right here. Um, so submandibular um, gland, sublingual gland, parotid gland, and then up here in the corner of the mouth with the anterior facial vein coming up to it is the molar gland. And then the last thing that we need to find here in the cat, and you'll have to go through some of this connective tissue here, are the lymph nodes, which are found. There's a lot of lymph nodes in, in the cat. They tend to have kind of a um, free-flowing dietary process. So they're not real careful about what they eat. So they need to have a lot of lymph glands to get rid of all that bacteria. So this is one of the lymph nodes right here. And then you'll want to free that up a little bit here. And then there's one on the other side. And I am going to want you to be able to get underneath them. Don't remove them um, because they are good markers for where you find the anterior facial vein. All right, so let's review the structures that you need to know in the cheek. These are the two lymph nodes, one here and one here. They are on either side of the anterior facial vein. The anterior facial vein goes right up to the corner of the mouth here, and in the corner of the mouth, this kind of pinkish structure here, this is called the <clears throat> molar gland. It's a salivary gland that we don't have, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. Right behind that is, this is the masseter muscle, okay? And then this is the, the area around the um, cheek here. This is the parotid gland. And then this part here, this white area here, this is the sublingual gland, this is the submandibular gland, this is the posterior facial vein, this is the jugular vein, and then um, as you go across the neck here, you're going to find a branch called the transverse jugular. So that's it for the structures in the cheek.